Longmont, Colorado, welcome. Are you ready? We are ready. Good morning, I'm Sean Lewis, and this is your next All-America City, brought to you by the City of Longmont, Colorado. With me today in studio is Harold Dominguez, City Manager, and Mayor Brian Bagley. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Sean. I'm always proud to talk about Longmont's amazing accomplishments, even in the midst of tragedy. And just three years ago, our community was rocked by a series of events that broke our heart. But we use these events to become a more, more caring, stronger community. And with more on that, we go live to Longmont, where Scott Roche is standing by. Sean, I'm here at the Safety and Justice Center in Longmont, where the city has been dealing with two horrific tragedies that occurred in close succession in March 2015. The first, a murder-suicide involving a father and son. The second, a nationally reported fatal abduction. Public Safety Chief Butler is here today to address the community. We don't want these incidents to become another series of, of tragedies that go unmet without any action. We need to change the conversation about what, how we think about folks struggling with their mental health, rather than see them through the lens of their deficiencies or as a problem to be solved. We need to see them through the lens of their gifts, that their voice counts, that their thoughts matter, that their humanness is valued, that they can feel safe and that they belong to our community. Longmont responded to Chief Butler's call for action. Just a year later, a collaboration known as Supporting Action for Mental Health, or SAM, put together an event called A Day for Grace that put these issues center stage, literally. With me now are SAM team members, Karen Roney of the city staff, and community members John Kello, Valley Burke, Dr. Sean O'Halloran, Doug Ward, and Gisela Hernandez. Uh, Karen, tell me more about what was done. The event drew over 500 people to an off-Broadway play that featured mental health and, more importantly, hope for the future, followed by a, speaker, um, a speaker's bureau as well as a resource fair. From that, Sam organized over a dozen community conversations on mental health. Three of those conversations were held with people in our community who spoke only Spanish and one that involved our city's youth. And how many people took part? We had over 250 people take part in those community conversations and we generated hundreds, just hundreds of ideas for action that we could take as a community. We selected community education and access to crisis mental health services as our top two priorities. And what came from those priorities? Well, we decided to do mental health first aid and 2,000 residents are being trained in mental health first aid. And this training equips more people in Longmont with the skills they need to both recognize and help people in the mental health crisis. We also launched Let's Talk, a bilingual educational program encouraging everyone to talk about mental health. And Scott, those com conversations are continuing in clubs, families, and in our faith communities. And has this made a difference? Absolutely. Nearly everybody has a friend or relative who struggles with mental health or has struggled with it themselves. It helps to know we're not alone and erasing the stigma. Uh, uh, we're joined now by community members Karen Moreno, Yasmin Renteria, and Dr. Chaira Okendel Figueroa of the Salud Clinic. Um, how vital is it to spread this message to all members of our community? Essential. The stigma around mental, mental health in the Latino community is particularly high. So we offer trainings in Espanol, Salud Mental para Todos. Last summer I participated in a youth event with my peers called 13 Reasons Why, so we can share experiences with suicide. Yes, and we have also prepared our instructors with the training and resources to better understand gender identity and the mental health and stressors faced by the LGBTQI community. And so Longmont comes together to build a stronger community for all. Uh, back to you, Sean. Thanks, Scott. It sounds like you're really working hard, Longmont, to turn these mental health tragedies into opportunities for community stream. Definitely. Showing we're a community that cares is a priority for Longmont. Uh, breaking news, Sean. I'm here in Longmont in September 2013, where rain has been falling for three days, including 17 inches in the canyons west of Longmont. With me now are city staffers Jeff Sutter, Carmen Ramirez, and Dale Rademacher. Longmont has opened its emergency operations center to meet the crisis. Uh, Jeff, tell me about more about that. We use reverse 911 to notify our residents to evacuate immediately. We rescue people and pets from their homes. Our EOC and our emergency shelters were open around the clock and they were staffed by city employees and residents from all parts of our community. Fortunately, we had no loss of life. Bilingual employees and community members worked to ensure vulnerable populations understood what was happening. Ser bilingüe fue el puente de inclusión. The flood ravaged St. Brain had cut our community in half. Access to our primary water supply was severed. 
our treatment plant was flooded and our raw water system was destroyed. Rebuilding was our immediate priority. Although hit hard by the flood, Longmont took the lead on area recovery efforts. Here to talk with me more about that now is Kathy Fedler of the city's disaster recovery office. More than 1,000 homes were um, impacted, damaged, or destroyed um, in Longmont, including a 50-unit mobile home park, which the city helped relocate. Almost 12,000 homes were damaged or destroyed throughout Boulder County, including in nearby uh, Lyons, where <clears throat> almost 20% of their housing stock was damaged or destroyed. Longmont took the lead in partnering with the eight other impacted communities to determine needs and fund projects. Together, this collaborative built almost 1,000 new affordable homes in six different communities, including Lyons, where Victoria Simonson is the town administrator. Victoria. Longland has been a great neighbor to Lyons. They offered uh, over 1,000 displaced residents housing for three months. They opened their schools and offered meeting space for our town hall. They also coordinated over $7 million of our recovery efforts. And Habitat for Humanity is, was also a great partner. Habitat built eight homes for flood of impacted families. We also repaired 23 homes. We're currently building six homes in Lyons. We couldn't do it without the great volunteers from the Longmont and Lyons community. What has Longmont learned from the 2013 flood? What steps do we take from here? What we've learned, Scott, is that our actions have to be environmentally sensitive and resilient as we work to protect people and property and infrastructure in the future. Our river project is going to remove from the floodplain over 500 structures that include mobile homes, senior housing, and many of our local businesses. We also identified barriers for our Spanish-speaking residents and made recommendations to build Resiliencia para Todos, Resiliency for All. We found that bilingual teams and cultural brokers are key connectors. Our findings serve as a model to help other communities consider everyone in their planning. We confirmed our belief in the power of community to help each other. Faith groups like mine, the United Church of Christ, along with LifeBridge, provided over 3,600 shelter days, helped with interim housing, and rebuilt 42 homes. And so Longmont rises above disaster, showing that with leadership and working together, they can build resiliency for all. Back to you, Sean. Thank you, Scott. Mayor Bagley, you must be very proud of this community. Absolutely, Sean. In Longmont, we come together and support each other. We overcome in a crisis. But not only that, we do great at planning ahead. I assume you're talking about Longmont's new fiber optic network that provides access to every home and business. In fact, I am, Sean. Um, years ago, we were upgrading our communications network with high fiber uh, electric broadband. We have 18 miles of fiber optic loop, which could easily, at the time, we understood that it could be converted into our citywide network. Uh, so we, our citizens went ahead and passed a $45 million bond, and we were well on our way to becoming the fastest internet in the entire, uh, entire country. With more on that, we go to Longmont Power and Communications, where Scott Roche is standing by. Sean, I'm at the LPC call center, where folks are calling nonstop to become Next Flight customers. With me now is Jessica Erickson of the Longmont Economic Development Partnership. Now, Jessica, tell me more about this new service, Next Flight. Thanks, Scott. Next Flight is a city-owned fiber optic internet service providing gigabit download and upload speeds to both homes and businesses, all without contracts or data caps. And what does this mean for Longmont? Well, it means the best of the internet is available to everyone. For businesses, it means the ability to move massive amounts of data. At home, it means families, family members have simultaneous access to high-speed internet and at some of the lowest prices in the country. And I understand this has a huge impact on the schools as well. Uh, with us to talk more about that is uh, Patty Quinones from the St. Green Valley Schools. Yes, St. Green launched a um, really ambitious technology plan that includes iPads for middle school and high school students. We're really excited because St. Brain also um, had Nextlight be supported in um, all of these devices. We now have 10 times more bandwidth and over 100,000 per year that's now available for more school programs. Every Longmont student, regardless of income level, now has equal opportunity to enhance learning and gain essential 21st century skills, drastically eliminating the digital divide. It's, it's awesome. awesome! Everyone, Everyone in our schools has super, super speed, speed internet, internet now. now. <laughs> it looks like Longmont is moving to the head of the class. Uh, I'm joined now by Scott Converse and Ron Thomas from the Longmont Makerspace, the Tinker Mill, who can tell us more about what Nextlight has done for uh, job creation. Well, Scott, 
Businesses don't just come to Longmont to be on the cutting edge. They also start new ideas at Tinker Mill that are really driving exponential innovation. Amazing. From Colorado's first gig city, I'm Scott Roche. Thanks, Scott. Mayor Bagley, did Nextlight live up to that early promise? Uh, did it ever. Now, more than 50% of our residents have Nextlight. And not only that, we have the highest, fastest speed of internet in the country, including, Giggle, including, including Google. And now other communities are calling us to ask how they can do it. Folks, it looks like there's some amazing work going on in Longmont. Longmonsters, any closing thoughts? As one, together, Longmont!